right, welcome to uh, Live with Lee and Haley. Haley is off today. She's getting a tramp stamp removed. It's a procedure that they got to do, and I yeah. think they burn that off now with I, the laser, I, I think is what they do. I, I did that or a torch. Yeah, maybe it is. But look who's here. From NBC Sports, uh, my buddy Kenny Rice is kind enough to come in and uh, fill the uh, the chair for uh, Haley Harmon. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you, pal. Uh, I Look was watching this. you uh, on the uh, on the Belmont coverage there. Mm -hmm. You got the Bob Baffert interview right mm -hmm. away. That's a special moment again with uh, Bob Baffert, the second Triple Crown in, what, three years, four years? Yeah, it's become an old hat now. Yeah. I mean, there's a generation growing up that don't realize that, you know, about 150 right. years of racing, it's only happened 13 times. They're thinking, well, I just saw one in 15. I saw another one. It is really special, only yeah. 13 of them. and. It was nice to get interview Bob, who I've known for 20-some years. And, uh, you know, you're in that moment. You know how it is. When yeah. You know the moment. You know what's going to be at stake. You're going to, I knew I was going to interview him win or lose. Mm -hmm. Makes it much nicer when he won, obviously. Yeah, that's a much better moment than the moment I had with Alan Cutler where we were both snotting and crying around. I cried when I watched that back <laughs> on, for many <laughs> on, many, on many levels I was crying. But yeah. I did like the, the, the old folks, uh, the old uh, horse retirement home was brilliant. Yeah. Right? That well. was genius stuff. Thank you. Now, um, you um, when you when you're doing uh, this stuff with uh, with NBC and you're you're in those moments, you get to see. It, it, this is interesting. What Kenny told me that uh, when you round justify a horse that you said was getting bigger yeah. as it as it aged, even the other horses seem to recognize uh, the size and strength of this special horse. Yeah, most horses. I mean, all the good ones. American Pharaoh was that way. They have trouble maintaining weight. As the grind of the Triple Crown goes on, three races, five weeks, naturally, a horse loses, you know, 50, 75 pounds. It's not a uh, cause for concern. But this horse got bigger. He was like 1270. Another horse is like around 1120 or something. He's huge. So he calls off, gets off the van last Wednesday at Belmont Park. He walks into his barn, barn he's never been to before, and all the horses stick their head out of the stall. <laughs> and, and now that's kind of natural. Well, who's here? But they followed this. That's yeah. not normal. They followed him like, wait, look at, look at this look, guy. Look at that guy. Look at this guy. He's yeah. really important. And look how big he is. He's bigger than all of us. And he had to run through uh, a little adversity because mm -hmm. uh, the slop at uh, Churchill, the fog, yeah. at, at, at the Preakness, and, of course, the Belmont was okay, but when you look at those aggregates, you know, he was right there with American Pharaoh, so you wonder if he had good conditions, what could he have done? Yeah. But I, what is even more remarkable, though, and yes. you know this better than anybody, is that even though those horses are great and they are, they're immortal now, Secretariat is still so far ahead of everybody else. Well, he's the standard. And you know what's unfair is everybody immediately says, well, he's the standard. Well, I know that. But do you say Kevin Durant's MVP is not as good as Michael Jordan's right, or LeBron right. James? You know, yep. Kevin Durant at this stage in his career is one of the elite players. You know, what's really interesting, this horse, though, did something that even Secretariat didn't do. Only Seattle Slew's done it. He was an undefeated Triple Crown winner. Oh. And on top of that, he did it in a shorter period of time than anyone. You know, he didn't race last year. 111 days, he wins the Triple Crown from his first race right. at Santa Anita in February to wrapping it up last weekend. That's, that's a career of that's Justify. A, that's amazing. That's a special horse. All right, now Kenny Rice is going to be hanging out with us all day. We've got a great show. We're going to uh, give you our... Uh, Half off dining for Tuesday with our friends at Bad Wolf Burgers. They're delicious. And then uh, Jerry Beauty, who was the attorney in that Netflix show, as you know, who uh, actually defended uh, Stephen Avery. That's, you know, that caught the attention of all of America. Um, we're going to talk with him because he's got a new book out, and we'll get to that in a minute. You want to do some hot topics? That's why I'm here, Lee, for the hot topics. Roll it! Hot topics. Just for that. Yeah, <laughs> we just saw this uh, earlier, but we want to show it to you again because this is uh, interesting sportsmanship at a high school baseball game up in Minnesota. So after he strikes out his childhood friend on the opposing team, which ended the game, he goes and consoles his buddy instead of celebrating with his teammates. He gives this long hug and then he walked him back toward the dugout before joining his teammates to celebrate this sectional win. These guys played Little League together before going to different schools, but they still remain close friends. And uh, now that you know the backstory, it seems very honorable. But if you didn't know anything about those guys, that'd be the weirdest moment ever, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. <laughs> hey, I struck you out. Hey, look, Come here. That's what I do after I end every game. Yeah, I, hug, let me, I like let to me hug, hug somebody. You. Yeah. Roger Clemens was known for giving hugs after let he struck out Let me embrace you like this. But you know what? I still wonder. Call me cynical. Go ahead. 
Uh, mm -hmm. What if he had hit the winning home run off his buddy? Right. Would he get a hug? I wonder then? if he would have gone out to the mound and hugged his buddy who gave up the pitch <laughs> that I just knocked over the fence and I'm going to the state title. Uh, I doubt it. Well, there's a new controversy surrounding the G7 summit. Canadian Prime Minister uh, Justin Trudeau accused of wearing fake eyebrows. Critics remarked that a falling fake eyebrow, yeah, that's, that's a, oh yeah. What? This is, I don't, last man on earth, you ever see that show with uh, yes. Will, what's his face, he does, yeah. So look, <laughs> they compare him to Mr. Potato Head with Mr. Potato Brows. Someone replaced the prime minister's uh, brows with uh, Donald Trump's signatures. Uh, fact checking and analyzing uh, this whole thing will, uh, determined they are, in fact, the real deal. It was lighting that blame for casting shadows with head-on angles. I don't know. Uh, because if you look at it head-on, they say that it looks normal. I don't know. That's a weird look. He's such a, he's such a pretty, pretty leader, isn't he? he, is, he in is that great. country. Yeah. A lot yeah. of... Well, and you had that summit last night. Yeah. With Donald Trump and Kim Jong Un. That was pretty special to watch, actually. No, it was regardless special of your politics. Right, that was, regardless, that because was it's the first time these two. See. But I, if you didn't know anything about the geopolitical spectrum, you'd see those two together and you go, hey, the flock of seagulls getting back together. I know. And, and you know, that and. It looked like a reunion. <laughs> hey, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> I mean, you talk about two weird haircuts. Those guys are the apex. Well, you know, and. Uh, I think that uh, it, it just shows you can be yourself these days, even if you're leading countries. Just be yourself. Come up with your bushy eyebrows that drop in your forehead or whatever you want to do. Comb your hair over or go for the mo look and, you know, it'll work. Yeah. Well, viewers were stunned after spotting Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. This yes. is creepy. They were in the audience at ITV's Britain's Got Talent. The host of the show joined the couple and asked them what they thought of the show and if they liked his wedding gift they gave him or he gave them. They nodded but never spoke. It turns out they were masked, thank God. Uh, part of uh, Madame Tussauds' London newest experience. A lot of Twitter users confessed they were fooled into thinking it was the real couple. Uh, Meghan and Harry are the new live figures at the iconic London attraction. Especially the Meghan girl. I don't know if we got an isolated close-up of that, but it looked real freaky, like she was had been Botoxed to death. Did you see the made-for-TV movie about these two? No, I missed The two people on it, it look just like them. That's why I watched it. Yeah. There. I'm not ashamed to say it. I watched Lifetime. Mm -hmm. I got through it. It was okay. Yeah. But I'm just glad. And, you know, so now we can't believe anything we're seeing, Lee. We may or may not have had a fake eyebrow. That obviously wasn't Harry and Meghan. Right. Uh, maybe. You think it was uh, the president and Kim, Kim Jong-un? Jong Could have been. Well, didn't I don't know. Kim Jong Un's supposed to have doubles anyway, guys that pretend to be him, right? Yeah, yeah. Most dictators do. I understand. It's hard to pull off the Donald Trump look, though. I don't think there's any <laughs> imposters for the president. Now, a ever, cute. <laughs> ever since that moon landing, you know, I, you know my questions. <laughs> a cute little shoplifter caught pilfering peanut M and M's from a store at Disney World's Magic Kingdom. A video posted on social media has gone viral. The squirrel was scolded and shooed off. You can see the little thief latch onto his candy loot and scamper out of the store. The video has been viewed more than a million times, shared by 7,000 people. That's probably some automatron Disney built. <laughs> I, you know. yeah, it's a smart squirrel. Notice it went for the nuts. Right, yeah. It went for the one of the nuts, not the plane. So the squirrel knows what he's doing. Give a squirrel a break. You know, they're out there in the middle of the road dodging cars all day. What's the squirrel? What is uh, uh, the chipmunk's name? What is that? Alvin? Yeah, but they're Theodore? not. Di are they Disney? They're not Disney characters, are they? I don't know. They're Disney's Disney. probably. No, bottom. Chip and Dale. Chip and Dale are Disney characters. Chip and Dale are, I think. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Do you know they ever told you the story you about. You met Chip and Dale? Uh, no, about oh. Al Michaels. <laughs> no. No, I have not heard the story of Al Michaels. Well, I know Al Michaels, but yeah, I haven't heard I know the you story. Know. So Al Michaels was part of a trade. Have you not heard this? Oh, that's right, for a Disney character. Well, for the original, because, yeah, yeah, see, um, Walt Disney, his before right. Mickey Mouse, he had, uh, what's the, it's a rabbit, which later morphed into Bugs Bunny. Yeah. And, and he drew that, and it was taken from him that's by right. some company that eventually... Somebody had, like NBC Universal had, yeah. and ABC. ABC, when Al went over from uh, yeah. Monday Night Football Here's what to we Sunday want. Football. As far as Al's contract That's and money, it. we want, and I'll think of it in a minute. I'll think of the, the character's name. He's the only person ever traded for a cartoon <laughs> character. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a true in any, story. any sport, any yeah. announcing, anything. Yeah. That is right. I forgot about that until you brought it up just then. Yeah. 
There's a, a meteorologist who solved a Rubik's Cube during a weather report. Lauren Olski showed off her skills during the morning newscast on WPEC. Uh, she solved the brain teaser in about two and a half minutes. The segment was shared online. It's been viewed on Facebook more than 225,000 times. A federal meteorologist also juggled during her weather segment. I can't even think of uh, the rabbit's name, much less do a Rubik's Cube. Oswald the Rabbit. Oswald Thank the Rabbit. Thank you, Jesse. That's who Al Michaels Way was go, traded Jesse. for. Yeah. There's, there's talk that I might be Daffy Duck in a trade, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to bring that up too prematurely. Although I do understand that Bill Mack has done the Rubik's Cube in like a minute and a half, and maybe later today you'll see it here on 18. I don't mm -hmm. know. With a couple of shots of bourbon. With, with, and, and juggling. Obviously, yeah, we need more jugglers. All. Yeah. And keeping you safe all at the same time. Uh, attendees at the Bonnaroo Festival are upset with Eminem's performance uh, during his set. A series of sound effects were played, which some thought it sounded like gunfire. Well, that sparked a debate on social media because the sound effects were the appropriate in light of recent mass shootings. Just think about Las Vegas. A spokesman said the rapper doesn't use gunshot sound effects during his live show. The loud effect was caused by a pyrotechnic concussion. Yeah, that's... Which covers up the lack of having a hit song in a long time. <laughs> That's exactly right. It worked out perfect for him. Yeah. When in doubt, smoke and mirrors. Yeah. I never was a big fan. I mean, he had I that one song, he had I that, guess. He had that, and, and the movie was good. Eight Mile was an interesting movie. His life was interesting. Kim Basinger played his mother. I yeah, think. that alone made it interesting. Right. Mm -hmm. And she's not really his mother, for those that may wonder. Well, yeah, no way. Well, you never know. Yeah. It's people, fake news stuff, you know. Yeah. Well, day two of giveaways. Are you ready? Because we're giving you a chance to win passes to a special advanced screening of American Animals here in Lexington. It's going to happen uh, Thursday, June 14th at the Kentucky Theater. It's based on the true story of four dudes here in Lexington who pled guilty in 2004 to robbing a Transylvania University library of multiple rare and valuable books. You can win a pair of movie passes to the advanced screening. Send us your name and number in an email. That's lwlh at lex18.com. Or you can message to our Facebook page. Both work. We'll announce the name of the winner at the end of the show. These guys, you remember this? I remember it well. I want to see this movie. Yeah, I'm too. curious how close they'll be to the actual facts. And from what I understand, it's very close. You know, they have these based on, inspired by stories. But this one is supposed to be pretty much right on it. It didn't seem like uh, they were... Uh, operating with a full deck because these guys then wanted to sell these books at a Christie's auction or something. Yeah, that was the deal, right? They took it to New York, like Christie's, <laughs> Sotheby's, somewhere yeah. like that. And the FBI is just waiting for these things to pop up. Why would you even think that would work? I, to me, that was, that was uh, you know, that, that really brought a lot of shame to Transylvania. Not the theft, but the way it was executed. <laughs> they, right. know, they didn't pull it off. I mean, this is, this is a school that prides itself on academics. They should be smart enough to sell this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I don't steal stuff. I can't sell it anywhere. Lot, I don't know about of, this. A lot of great alums <laughs> out of Trancy, but when you think of people like Matt Jones, maybe you understand. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I was on Matt's show at the Derby. <laughs> Were you? Yeah. yeah. Thank, you didn't watch. I thought you had to watch Hey Kentucky every night. I don't know. I, oh, I don't contract. even watch when I'm on it. I watch when you're on it. <laughs> no. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's why I'm here. All right. Well, he's become a familiar face for a lot of people who watch the nail-biting documentary about a man on trial for murdering a woman. Jerry Buting joins us next with his book and a look back at Making a Murderer. 